Option A. Okay, for this topic. And you can see, every single question, with the exception of question 4, you definitely know it's Solo's model. Every question will state Solo's model. So you will not go wrong. Not like tutorial 1, right? Consumption theories. Okay? In this case, you have to make guesses. Here, there's no guess at all. Strictly Solo's model. Even for question 4, reaching the golden rule. And that is the concept applicable only in your Solo's model. So questions for this topic for section A is very clear cut. No need to make wild guesses. And it comes out every year. Okay? Now, however, questions are very tricky. Because examiner knows 99% of the students will do this question. So this is a question to actually elicit the very good students. Okay? And over the years, examiner make the question very difficult. Okay, so again, I deliberately pick questions that are difficult. Okay, the easier questions we already discussed them in the lecture notes. Population rate increase, you shift the curve. Alright, okay, and what else we discussed? Saving rate increase, we shift the curve. All that we did in lecture notes are actually past the exam question. They are the easier direct question. Alright, but these are tricky. Now, if you look at question 1 and 2, I taught you last week, uh, your e -picks. Before you do e -picks, first read the question, especially singular and plural verb and noun. The two questions has the word countries and economies. Telling you, your answer must always talk about two countries. If your answer is always the country, the country, you fail already. Okay, so that is one significant point. Point number two, alright, question one. Higher rates of population, okay, will have a lower growth in output per person. So there's a word growth there. Means you want to discuss change in small y divided by small y. That's called growth, alright, of output per person. Whereas, Question 2 was output per person, capital per real G, uh, capita at same level of income, alright? Real GDP per capita. So both, question, both questions was talking about two countries, alright? But one of them was talking about change in the small y. So let me show you the outline, huh? Okay, so question one was talking about two countries, country A, country B. Okay, they each have their population. This is population growth for country A. This is population growth for country B. And okay, one of them was larger, so we put it this in first. So the question says. Countries with higher rates of population growth, referring to country B, will have, alright, you want to prove that the growth of output per worker, okay, of country B, because she has a bigger population, will be smaller, okay, than the output growth of country A. So you cannot just see the word solos model, you cannot see the word higher population and go and shift the curve and that's it. It's not. You have to do a careful planning of the question. First, must have two countries. Right? Know what the question want and know what you want to prove. Your output growth rates. Okay? And you quickly recall See, this is when you take the first 30 seconds when you read the question. You sketch out to know the perimeter of the question and you try to recall. Alright, okay? At steady state. If you don't have technology, okay, output growth of each person is zero. Okay, that means for both country A and B, they are the same. 
right? If you don't have technology at steady state, okay? Although the K star and the Y star are different, but as long as they are on steady state, the output per person don't grow anymore. It's zero. So both of them are equal, okay? Or, okay, if there is technological growth, Okay, this is actually a preferred answer because when you talk about countries, you want to show that you understood the real world. So I'll just do a quick recall. If there is technological growth, output growth per person is GA, the level of technology growth. And in this case, you could have two possibilities. You could have change in Y over Y of country B to be larger than A. You also can have to be smaller. So the answer here could be false. The answer here could be true. So you have to really read the question growth of output per person. So it depends on which method you want to use. If you use the first method, right, I'll demonstrate, you are explaining country A and B will reach their steady state. There is no technological growth. They will all just be at zero growth. So if you use this top answer, the answer can only be false because they are exactly equal. Right now, you will get five marks, your full five marks, because you answered the question. But remember, you will not qualify for right, being an excellent student. Why is that so? Because you take things too easy. You took the simple shortcut. All right? Okay? So this is not a wrong answer. Hear me correctly. You can score full marks. You did answer. But if you are a very well-prepared student for this topic, when the question says, all right, countries, it must relate to the real world. So there must be technological growth, where output growth per person is GA. All right, so individual countries, their technological growth rate, all right, can actually be higher or lower than each other. Okay, so if you want to prove true or false, therefore you can use various example okay so i'm going to put in the example first to show you okay you can talk about two countries it could be singapore versus myanmar two countries of course in the exam you can put country a and b but just to show you all right every time when i want to talk about technology and population i will do about think about two extreme countries Singapore population growth rate actually lower. Myanmar will be higher because right, they are still a developing nation. But you could see right, the technological growth rate of Myanmar would be much lesser than Singapore. So they have a big population but they don't have a high technological growth rate. Okay, because all these years, they were a closed door economy. So the technological growth rate is very low compared to Singapore. So in this case, this can be true. Okay, all right? Then, of course, you can talk about another country. If you want the statement to be false, a country that has big population, that would be China. Okay, and because of high R&D, and they have a lot of talents, it is possible that China's technological growth rate is higher than Singapore. So of course, during the exam, you won't be able to come up with these examples. But at least, this is quite easy to determine. Countries will have big population, but lower technological growth rate. So you will always think about developing countries, right? Right, so you can talk about uh, big countries like Indonesia, Myanmar, Vietnam compared to Singapore. That one is clear cut. Whereas this case is not so easy. Okay, so you don't, don't have to fit examples all the time. But if you can, that's always a bonus. 
So you can see, when we do economic growth through false question, you don't see the word higher population should occur. You don't. You literally must plan out what the question wanted first. You have two countries, one of them, the population growth rate was higher. Then you show how they reach their steady state, and you conclude that at their steady state, this is a possible outcome. Okay? So with that, I will give you a more detailed outline. So this is how I plan. Okay? Then the standard answer. So you should know that this topic, your diagram, is compulsory. Huh? Right? So you have to do K cap, Y cap. Remember, if you didn't discuss K cap, Y cap, it's definitely easier. But it doesn't look good on you. So I will do the most comprehensive answer. Alright? Okay? So in this case, of course, you have your production curve, your savings curve. Now, see how me? Alright? This is how I do it. I will do it for country A first. Delta plus GN of country A plus technology. Be careful of this term. Huh? GA is technological growth rate of both countries. So sometimes the notation can be a little bit tricky and we get them mixed up. So we are saying that this is country A's condition. So country A her steady state is at K star 1 cap. Her output is at Y star 1 cap. Okay, we have the corresponding point A and B. So, I only use one diagram. But remember, we said country B, the GN is larger. So, I make a very crucial assumption. If I want to use the exact same diagram, I must assume country B okay, must share the same characteristics. Okay, what is the same characteristics? I'm assuming they share the same production function. Because I'm going to use the same diagram. Right? They will share the same savings rate, the same depreciation rate and the same technological growth rate because I want to use the same diagram. You don't see us drawing two diagrams, one. it's always one. Right? So in this case, since your GN of country B was much larger than GN of country A, so you state what you want to discuss, you're going to use the same diagram except country B's population is bigger. Therefore, delta plus GNB plus GA must be larger than delta plus GNA my K cap I'm missing, uh, plus GA times K cap. So this will provide you a basis saying that since the countries will share the same characteristics, Production function, cost features, savings function. But GB is larger. Therefore, using the same diagram, country B's cost curve is higher. Right? Therefore, you have delta plus GNB plus GA times K. Right? So bear in mind, every time when we are discussing between countries, our steps are the same. We always use the same solo diagram and we combine the diagram. We don't draw separate diagram. So for country B, right, her cost is now at point A prime. Right? So in other words, at K star 1 cap. Country B is not at steady state because the delta plus GNB plus GAK cap, right, the cost curve is higher than the benefit. 
So K star 1 cap is for country A. Country A is at her own steady state. But country B, using the same characteristics, is not. Okay, so in other words, we are comparing this step again. So this is your step 2. Step 1 was here. Okay, was to talk about the curve is higher. So you draw a higher curve. Step 2 is the standard process. Compare, benefit and cost. Okay, so I'm not going to explain for you. Huh? You go back and do it yourself. Step 3 to 5 is the standard. You know your K should drop. Alright, because cost exceeded the benefit. So we have done this, alright, almost 10 times in lecture already. You should know production will drop. Okay, savings will drop. Okay, and country B's cost, sorry, step 3, alright, will drop. Okay, so again, just to put in the highlighted segment to show you that you are going on the correct path. So for country B, she will slowly adjust until this point, let's call this point E. So that's our step 4. Okay, then we bring it down. That's our step 5. K star 2 cap. Okay, then we bring it up. That is our Y star 2 cap. That's our standard 5 steps. Right? So, to you, this may be tedious, but to the examiner, you are expected to do it. So you have to write very quickly the adjustment process. So that's why I mentioned for your lecture note, okay, we happily write down step 1 to 5, huh? but you have to write in sentences. You've got to train yourself. Right? So in this case, you could see for country A, she is at K star 1 cap producing Y star 1 cap because her population was G and A. Alright, okay, then for country B, she was at K star 2 cap producing Y star 2 cap. So in terms of output, B is lower, but this is output per effective worker. But both of them are at steady state. Alright, so be very careful. Therefore, the change in Y cap over Y cap is zero. Right, you look at your axis, you're measuring output per effective worker. So the growth rate for both of them is zero. Okay, but you're not discussing Y cap. The question was change in y over y is actually the technological growth rate. So based on the diagram, okay, since we assume GA is the same because you wanted the same diagram, right? Assume GA is the same for both countries change in y over y is equal for country B is change in y over y for country A. Alright, so in this case, at this point, the statement is false based on a standard Solos model analysis. So if you reach up to here, you really get your full 5 marks reading because you have used the model, you have used the given characteristics, you have discussed steady state, which is K star 1, K star 2, you have discussed growth per effective worker and growth per worker. Alright, okay, so you have answered the question, but based on this diagram, the answer is false because you assume in the diagram. All the variables except GN was different, right? So in this case, based on the analysis, the statement is false. So you have explained, you have done your EP and I. 
Right? You have explained, you've proven with diagram, you indicated your assumptions many times. You keep saying they share the same characteristics. You end up saying they still share the same characteristics, which is GA. So the statement based on this is false. Okay? But this is how you discuss C and S. Challenge the assumption, see the world. Okay? But you don't need to redraw, you just need to highlight. Okay? However, Remember, this is a very powerful word in the exam answer. Okay, right? It is not realistic to assume A and B share the exact characteristics. Okay? Especially you assume However, not rely. G A is uh, the same. So I challenge my assumption. I just need to a. say it is not realistic to assume A and B they share the same exact characteristics. And particularly, which one do I want to highlight that assuming they are the same is ridiculous? I want to highlight G A. Right? So when you challenge assumption, you don't need to write lengthy answer. It's just to re-look at your assumption, which of them is ridiculous. How can you assume two countries have the same technological growth rate? It's impossible. You look at Singapore versus Thailand, Malaysia, our neighbours, our technological growth rate. We are so near each other, but we are different. Right? So therefore, you then show us, see the world. For example, okay, this is what I put in. Country A is Singapore with a lower GN but higher GA. Okay, and country B is Myanmar, right, with higher GN. Did you see? I answered the question. Right, but lower technological growth rate. So in this instance, the statement can be true. Right? The country with a bigger population growth rate can have a lower output growth rate because GA is your change in Y over Y. Now, to you, some of you are frowning very badly and you go like, gosh, okay, why is it so intense? But you could see, right, you are being stretched like a rubber band. You start to think about your model. You don't just happily shift girl and say conclusion. To do the C and S, challenge the assumption, see the world, is to really understand the question. Plan the answer so that you really understand and answer the question. True false question is not glance true and true or glance true and false. It's not. Okay? So country A, smaller population, higher GA. Country B can have higher population, like what the question say, lower GA. Lower GA is your output growth rate. In this case, the statement based on this example can be true. Right? Okay? So you try to prove two cases of your statement. Try to prove it true and false. Five marks. This is the question you must aim to get seven out of five. This is the question you must prove the examiner. You are so well prepared. You read the question and you can show your epic skills. Consumption theory may not be able to show epics all the time, but this topic you can because you really have 